This is an original Famicom. If you import this little guy to America and want to hook it up to a television, you are immediately faced with the following realization. It only has RF output. In addition, you need to tune your television to cable channel 95 or 96 in order to use it. Depending on the display you are using, you may not have that option available. There are certainly some alternatives. You could modify your Famicom for either composite video or RGB, among other things. This may or may not involve drilling holes in your Famicom depending on you or your installer's approach. This is an acceptable solution for many, but is not for everyone. Another possibility would be to use a VCR to receive channel 95 or 96 and then output to channel 3 or 4 or composite video. Of course, this adds a lot of bulk to your gaming solution, especially if you want a dedicated setup consisting of only a Famicom with a period appropriate CRT. There is another option that most people do not seem to take, and we will get to that shortly. I've seen some react incredulously when being told they need to tune a television to channel 95 in order to use a Famicom. That makes no sense, they say. Why would you use channel 95 or 96? The short answer is, channels are different in Japan. But if you are like me, you like explanations, so let's do it. RF stands for radio frequency. Just as you can tune a radio to your desired station by selecting a frequency, so also can you tune an over-the-air broadcast on your television. In the case of this television, it received analog transmissions in the VHF and UHF bands during its day. However, unlike the radio, which demands that you select an actual frequency in megahertz in the case of FM broadcasts, the television has channels. Channels are basically 6 MHz spans of frequencies. So, channel 2 spans 54 to 60 MHz. Channel 3 spans from 60 to 66. Each time you select a new channel, you move your 6 MHz spans location. Channel numbers are 100% subjective. The numbers mean nothing. They are simply names assigned to various frequency ranges. Just because the channel numbers here are consecutive doesn't mean that the frequencies associated with them are as well. You can see a notable jump in the frequencies for channel 7 versus channel 6, for example. Channel numbers are consecutive, but the frequencies behind the scenes are a different story. This disconnect between channels and frequencies meant that analog cable could use their own frequencies for their channel numbers. This was much more obvious in the days when you bought a television and had to know if your purchase was cable ready or not. In the case of cable television, here are the frequencies for channels 95 and 96. These are, of course, the channels we use for the Famicom. In Japan, these frequencies are associated with channels 1 and 2. You may have also noticed that the audio carriers overlap the radio frequencies of the FM band. Since the audio and RF channels for television is FM modulated, you can tune Famicom audio using your radio. With access to the tuning controls inside the Famicom, as well as an understanding of channels versus frequencies, let's turn our attention to manually altering the frequencies at the source, the Famicom itself. Note that your Famicom model may not look like mine. This is the only Famicom I have, so this is the only one I can tune. There are a few trimmer potentiometers inside these RF modulators that allow you to make adjustments. I have removed this Famicom from its shell so I can access the tuning controls while the system is powered up. Let's take a look at the current state of this machine. It is hooked up to a Toshiba Blackstripe TV from 1987. The Famicom itself does not seem to be in the best state, regardless of if we use channel 96 or channel 95. I'm using a pretty decent cable here to connect it to the television, but there is one thing to note. This Famicom has a pretty bad filter cap at the power input, so I ordered some replacement capacitors, recapped the Famicom, and also switched to the best cable I have in order to improve the signal. It looks a lot better now, both on channels 95 and 96. To make adjustments to the trimmers, I'm going to use some of my anti-static alignment tools. I'll provide a link to them in the video description. For the sake of an accurate demonstration, I'm going to let this video run in real time. You can see what happens to the picture on the TV whenever I drift the frequency either direction out of channel 95's bracket.
So now we move to the destination channel, channel 6, and start rotating the trimmer to lower the frequency bracket. We know the frequency range sits just below channel 95, so we should start to see Super Mario Bros. 3. And there it is. After a few more turns, we have the Famicom dialed into US Channel 6. Not bad for a console and a television that are both over 30 years old and connected via RF. With the obvious exception that the Famicom has new capacitors, the system is unmodded and can easily be restored to channel 95 should the need arise. For those of you that enjoy hooking up old consoles to old displays, I hope this provides you with another option if you didn't know about it already. Thanks for watching.